For 17 years, postal inspectors, members of America's oldest federal law enforcement agency, worked on the federal task force investigating Ted Kaczynski, the infamous Unabomber. From 1978 to 1995, Kaczynski used the U.S. Postal Service to send nine of his 16 known package bombs to random victims. Postal inspectors were present in 1996 when Kaczynski was arrested at his remote cabin. Postal inspectors have been policing the mail since the days of the Continental Congress. The nation's first postal inspector was hired by postmaster Benjamin Franklin and began work in August 1775, nearly a year before the Declaration of Independence. In the 1800s, postal inspectors mostly investigated mail thefts. In 1873, new postal laws brought a variety of criminal acts under the jurisdiction of the postal inspectors. They would work cases involving lotteries, medical quackery, and the nation's new obscenity laws. By the turn of the 20th century, the postal inspectors were regarded as a bona fide police organization. In 1909, they received national attention for cracking a major case. In one of America's earliest examples of organized crime, Italian immigrant gangs operated extortion rings. The gangs would send victims a threatening letter signed with a black handprint. In Ohio, a band of black hand extortionists, posing as law-abiding fruit merchants, masterminded a multi-state operation. Postal Inspector Frank Oldfield and his team arrested 16 members of the gang in December 1909. Soon after, Oldfield received his own black hand letter threatening his life. Oldfield was not intimidated and the gang members he arrested were convicted and sent to federal prison. Following Oldfield and the Postal Inspector's example, other Black Hand gangs were broken up around the country. Another notable case involved Charles Ponzi, a businessman who promised investors enormous profits. People clamored to invest their money with Ponzi, who claimed his business was buying and selling postal reply coupons. Postal inspectors became suspicious. Their investigation showed the total international sales of postal reply coupons couldn't possibly account for the profits Ponzi claimed. The profits were an illusion created as Ponzi took money from new investors to pay earlier ones. His company collapsed when the investors demanded their money back. He was convicted and sent to prison, but his name lives on. Postal inspectors still actively investigate modern-day Ponzi schemes. In the 1980s, postal inspectors helped end the very lucrative scams of TV evangelist Jim Baker. His organization raised more than $150 million, partly through fraudulent fundraising pitches sent by mail. Among other charges, Baker was convicted of mail fraud and served more than four years in federal prison. Postal inspectors still guard against dangerous items in the mail, which today can include shipments of opioids. And the Postal Inspection Service routinely investigates consumer crimes, including art forgeries, the sale of bogus sports memorabilia, and online tech support scams. The long tradition of the postal inspectors keeping the mail safe and secure continues every single day. This video was brought to you by the Public Education Project, an independent nonprofit group dedicated to improving public knowledge of the government by sharing the rich history and exciting stories of the federal agencies that serve our nation. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe now to start your journey into the fascinating history of the U.S. government today. If you'd like to delve deeper into the rich history of the Postal Inspection Service or any other federal agency, be sure to visit our Agency Histories page at publiceducationproject.org. Featuring nearly 250 detailed pages showcasing the diverse stories of agencies dating back to the nation's founding. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on new videos and updates.